What's up everybody, this is Jonathan with Boston Collectors and in today's video, we're going to be unboxing MMS 589 Django Fett from the Attack of the Clones. We're met with the usual features on a Star Wars product by Hot Toys. We have the cigar band wrapped around on the front featuring a few additional images, product number, and the name of the figure on the front and side portions. With that, we have the Attack of the Clones blue on blue colorway to match their previous releases. As with every release, we also have the legal information, warnings, and additional information located on the back of the box. As we start to dive in, Hot Toys usually add an art card with their figure releases, and this one's no different. As always, it's a photo we've seen before in their promotional material with a few Photoshop effects on top. With the box out of the way, let's go ahead and start diving into the review. If you like what you see so far, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. It helps us out a lot. To start, we're given relaxed hands on the figure right out of the box. With these, you do receive a pair which can be used for the typical types of gestures. They also pair nicely with a few accessories or just simply holding on to his belt. Next up, we have a pair of fists included as well. Love to see pairs on this one since he only came with six hands. Moving on, we have a pair of gripping slash trigger hands for his pistols. So I say gripping because these can also serve as hands for holding the additional accessories he come with. Speaking of his pistols, they're very unique and accurate to what we saw in the film. We've got the metallic paint, slim design, and they also holster very well without any problems. As for a few of his other accessories, let's start with the security overloader. This particular device is used to override security systems while bounty hunting. Next up, we have the scramble key, which is used to bypass the electronic locks requiring passwords. We also have the tube, which housed the centipede-like arthropods used in the assassination attempt on Padme. Hot Toys went ahead and gave us a swap-out attachment for his gauntlet. Simply slide the braided cord beneath the clothing and attach it to the gauntlet. It's held in by magnets with very small grooves for the pieces to shift into. While the blade looks a little toy-like, it, it gets the job done. There are very small movable pieces for the additional accessories. For the right gauntlet, we can pull out the grappling hook to attach the launched grappling hook included. It isn't very secure, but again, it gets the job done. I recommend not taking out the grappling hook unless you absolutely want to. I already lost a tiny piece for mine. As for the left gauntlet, the top muzzle can slide out as well for the flame effect. This one took a little bit more pressure to extract, but it came out eventually. Once it's out, simply slide in the flame effect and you're ready to go. I don't typically use these effects, but I appreciate having them in the box. This one also didn't appear to weigh down the arm on my figure either. Moving on, we have the standard issue jetpack. It's reminiscent of what we see with the 501st, but with an extra design. First, we have our magnetized attachment. And we can also hook the jetpack and magnetize it as well. Thruster effects are also included and work on both jetpacks with the figure. Like the 501st, with a bit of additional muscle power, we can detach the rocket from the jetpack. While these are meant for the thrusters, we can use them for the rocket as well. As for the additional jetpack, it's utilizing the same exact functionality as the previous version. Not only can the thruster effects key into both thrusters, but we're also given a rocket firing effect specially made for this jetpack. Moving on, we also have an asymmetrical style poncho included in the box. Putting this on is a lot better than any and all the previous ponchos by Hot Toys. We have a clamp on both sides and even better, wiring along the sides and the bottom of the poncho. As for the base, it's the same. It isn't Camino styled and it doesn't match his ship flooring, so there you go. 
We do get a fly pole though and a clamp for those high flying poses. So more Morrison's likeness is used quite a bit throughout upcoming figures and current figures in our collection. While I do think they captured the scars pretty well, I think his portrait is a little soft. Well, that and the proportions aren't exactly matching what we saw in the Attack of the Clones. I won't go too deep into pictures and comparisons, unless of course you all prefer what we did in the Moff Gideon review. If so, let us know down below. But getting back to Django. It's a very solid portrait if you aren't being too particular. But because I am, I catch all of the smaller details that are missing. Hot Toys included the headset Django used on his ship as well. This is a very soft plastic, but I'd still exercise caution when putting this on. It isn't exactly a struggle to get it on, I just prefer exercising a little bit of caution. The rest is based on minor adjustments and tweaks to the headset. When you're done, you can also swivel the mic up and down depending on what you're going for. Also, don't worry if the piece comes out, it'll just slide right back in. There's a good amount of detail work going into this piece. None of the straps are articulated, but they look pretty cool. Let's go ahead and dive into the helmet next. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. We'd appreciate the love. We're pretty familiar with the Mandalorian style helmets, right? We also know Jango's helmet when we see it too. While there isn't too much to write home about, we have what we come to expect to a certain extent. We have the movable rangefinder, but it isn't exactly detailed like what we saw with the Death Watch. We also have a slight restriction to the helmet articulation with the soft plastic at the base. Granted, the armor is prominent on the shoulders, and it restricts it anyway. It's just double the restriction. <laughs> Unfortunately, there isn't any detail on the inside of the helmet either. Remember what I said earlier, to a certain extent? Apart from that, the rest of it is done pretty well. We have pitting along the sides of the helmet for added weathering, the reflective visor, and the ventilation along the back. With this release, Hot Toys also added a swap out feature for the helmet. It's utilizing a magnet and groove so that it doesn't slip out. I love the seamless appearance and the ease of use with this piece. If you prefer this look to your Django Fett, then you're good to go. All in all, it's solid though. I just wish we had more details inside of the helmet. Beginning with the boots, they feel very sturdy, but because of the design, they tend to rock forward, resulting in the figure falling often. With that, there's a lot of great articulation in the ankle, though. As we begin to move up, we start taking note of the armor design throughout the figure. The plates on the pants are velcroed on, limiting any extra restriction. We're also given double bends in the knees as well. The only real restriction here would be the holsters. It takes a bit of futzing to get them to work in your favor with crazier stances, but... It is possible. Speaking of the holsters, they're extremely durable. Much better than what we received with the transport trooper and honestly, anything else in my collection. There's a lot of pleather though, so there's quite a bit of maintenance on some of the thinner straps. The major downside to this figure would be the left gauntlet. Over time, the sharp edges tend to destroy the hands if you pull them down to a normal level. The right side is perfectly fine and it works so much better. As if the holster pleather wasn't enough, not only is the belt pleather, but each individual pouch is as well. While it adds more of a premium feel to the figure, this can be a huge negative to those of you who need to condition often. Moving up to the chest region, the majority of the restriction is due to the pleather vest. Also, none of the armor pieces here are velcroed except for the back plate. I'm not feeling a bodysuit beneath the clothing, but I do plan on checking after the review is done. If there's a way to add more mobility to the figure, I think it's worth it. As for the posability of the helmet, it isn't too restrictive, but I've grown accustomed to the articulation on a lot of the previous Mandalorian releases. 
It isn't terrible though, but trying to nail the side aiming is a little rough. Overall, it's phenomenal if you aren't into posing, but if you are, you need to make some tweaks or try to pose around some of those restrictions. To start, we have Count Dooku, the Death Watch Mandalorian, Captain Rex, Commander Cody, Boba Fett, the Armorer, the Heavy Mandalorian, Beskar Mando, and last but not least, the 501st Deluxe. Overall, this figure really surprised me and checked off a lot of boxes for an almost perfect release. As far as accessories, I feel like they went above and beyond with giving us what's included. That for me is already a 10 out of 10 for accessories. As for the portrait, almost, almost. I don't like the restriction with the posing because of the eyes looking from the side. The portrait is also a little soft, but overall, it, it gets the job done. While the body is restrictive, it looks pretty accurate from what we saw in the movie. Originally, I wasn't planning to have Jango Fett in my collection, but after my wife talked me into it, I'm glad I have him. He's a simple man, I guess, making his way into my collection. <laughs> With that said, I'm giving this figure an 8.5 out of 10. I think it's only fair for what's included and the overall release. As always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. We have a lot more on the way. Also, join the conversation over on our community Discord server as well. If you're interested in being a producer for our channel, consider supporting us over on Patreon. We're creating exclusive photos as wallpaper for your mobile devices with more to come. This is Jonathan with Boston Collectors, and thank you so much for watching.